Good morning, kindergarten. Today I am going to be reading a parable from nature to you, to you, one of my favorite chapters, 12, called Daily Bread. Parables from Nature is written by Margaret Gaddy. Chapter 12, Daily Bread. Your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Matthew chapter 6, verse 32. I wish your cheerfulness were a little better timed, my friend, remarked a tortoise, who for many years had inhabited the garden of a suburban villa, to a robin redbreast, who was trilling a merry note from a thorn tree in the shrubbery. What in the world are you singing about at this time of year when I and everybody else of any sense are trying to go to sleep and forget ourselves? I beg your pardon, I am sure, replied the robin. I did not know it would have disturbed you. You must be gifted with very small powers of observation, my friend, rejoined the tortoise. Here have I been grubbing my head under the leaves and sticks half the morning to make myself a comfortable hole to take a nap in. And always, just as I am dropping off, you set up one of your senseless pipes. You are not over troubled with politeness, good sir, I think, observed the robin, to call my performance by such an offensive name and to find fault with me for want of observation is the most unreasonable thing in the world. This is the first season I have lived in the garden and all through the spring and summer you have never objected to my singing at all. How was I to know you would dislike it now? Well, your own sense might have told you as much. Without giving myself the trouble of explanation, persisted the tortoise. Of course, it's natural enough and not disagreeable to hear you little birds singing round the place when there is something to sing about. It rather raises one's spirits than otherwise. For instance, when the weather becomes mild in the early year and the plants begin to grow and get juicy and it is time for me to get up from my winter sleep, I have no objection to be awakened by your voices. But now, in this miserable season, when the fruits and flowers are gone, and when even the leaves that are left are tough and dry, and there is not a dandelion that I care to eat, and when it is colder and colder and damper and damper every day, this affection of merriment on your part is both ridiculous and hypocritical. It is impossible that you can feel happy yourself, and you have no business to pretend to it. But begging your pardon once more, good sir, I do feel happy, whatever you may think to the contrary, answered the robin. What do you mean to say that you like cold and damp? and bare trees, with scarcely a berry upon them? I like warm sunny days the best, perhaps, replied the robin. If I'm obliged to think about it and make comparisons, but why should I do so? I'm quite comfortable as it is. If there is not so much variety of food as there has been, there is, at any rate, enough for every day. And everybody knows that enough is as good as a feast. For my part, I don't, I don't see how I can 
help being contented. Contented? What a dull idea to be just contented. I am contented myself after a fashion, but you are trying to seem happy, and that is a very different sort of thing. Well, but happy. I am happy, too, insisted the robin. Well, that must be, then, because you know nothing of what is coming, suggested the tortoise. As yet, while the open weather lasts, you can pick up your favorite worms and satisfy your appetite. But when the ground has become so hard that the worms cannot come through, or your beak get at them, what will you do? Are you sure that will ever happen? inquired the robin. Oh, certainly. In the course of the winter, at some time or another, and indeed, it may happen any day now, which makes me anxious to be asleep and out of the way. Oh, well, if it happens now, I shall not mind a bit, cried the robin. There are plenty of berries left. But supposing it should happen when all the berries are gone, said the tortoise, actually teased at not being able to frighten the robin out of his singing propensities. Nay, but if it comes to supposing, exclaimed the robin, I shall suppose it won't, and so I shall be happy still. But I say it may happen, shouted the tortoise. And I ask, will it? rejoined the robin, in quite as determined a manner. Which you know I cannot answer, retorted the tortoise again. Nobody knows exactly about either the weather or the berries beforehand. Then let nobody trouble themselves beforehand persisted the robin. If there was anything to be done to prevent or provide, it would be different. But as it is, we have nothing to do but to be happy in the comfort each day brings. Here the robin trilled out a few of his favorite notes, but the tortoise soon interrupted him. Allow other people to be happy, then, as well as yourself. Cease squalling out of that tree. I could have forgiven you had the branches been full of haws, but as they are all withered or eaten, you have no particular excuse for singing in that particular bush rather than elsewhere, so let me request you at once to go. Of course, I will do so, answered the robin politely. It is the same thing to me exactly, so I wish you a good morning, and, if you desire it, a refreshing sleep. So saying, the robin flew from the thorn tree to another part of the grounds, where he could amuse himself without interruption. And the tortoise began to hustle under the leaves and rubbish again, with a view to taking his nap.